It couldn't have gone better for the weed show. We have found the Karsten rig. Brand new? No. <laughs> Brand new? <laughs> it's been around. How, how do you only have 106,000 miles on this thing? It only goes six hours from the house. Okay. The van this is not the Long Ranger. Yeah, it's not the Long Ranger. Okay. Ranger. So we are pumped. You're on a Suzuki again, Corey Karsten. Yes. What? You're on a Husky, dude. I was scared and soupy. It was all right, though. I, it, well, I'm sure it was all it, right. It worked pretty good, so. So how was today? Uh, it was all right. Got in. You got races, in? Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Got in. Struggled Miller got a little hurt. Bit, but... Oh, Max Miller got hurt. Yeah. Learning. Learning all the time. Yep. So better than last year's races? Like uh, stepping up? No. It felt worse today. Oh, okay. Last year I felt a lot better, but. Okay. Keep improving. First round for me, so. How long is the drive? Six hours ish? Uh, yeah, just yeah, exactly. I was a. That was my next question. Please tell me you're racing to make some money tomorrow. He might not be. I am. You're racing I'm tomorrow. Going. Where? Pagoda. Pagoda. Okay. There is, and you know this better than anybody, because I remember back in the day, like, watching a Supercross with Barry Karsten, uh, like in Pontiac Saturday night, and then I'd be at English Town Sunday morning, and you'd be racing, and I'm like, how is that logistically, logistically possible? Harry, my dad. Her, your dad, all right. And my dad, yeah. And putting some miles on this. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing you've got here. <laughs> See you, Karsten family. You can't start the weed show better than the Karsten family. Trucking it back to New Jersey. Corey Karsten making the motos on the legend Barry Karsten. What's up, LeBig? Weed show is brought to you by, what's that? Yeah, really? Two out of three? Yeah. Looking good. Allons en port de la patrie, le jour de gloire. Yes, my turn to do it. No, no, I'm good. Uh, just don't say anything that I'm not. I don't have to bleep anything, right? That's okay. just your song. Okay. Don't. We don't want to say merit or anything like that. No, no you're clean. Oh, I love it. Donations, fans, read it and weep. So uh, we're done with round three of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship here at High Point Raceway in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Look at this sky. Yet another race that was going to be a mutter that turned out not to be a mutter. It's all brought to you by Race Tech and their gold valves and their engine services. Choice of privateers all over the place. I'm not sure about the Karsten family. They're probably partial to Kessler Pro Suspension, which is insider trade in New Jersey. We'll let that slide. But if you're a rider that's not on a factory team, okay, these guys got like suspension guys personally for them. But if you want to have suspension like that for you, Race Tech, what's up? What's up? What's up? Can I touch this? Yeah, I don't care. God, this is the way we do it. The oh man, I'm getting bomb. Bomb. How are you guys? Good, are I'm you the vlog, the you're in the vlog. You're in the weed oh, show. Yeah. Where are you guys from? I'm from Slippery Rock. Like 45 Slippery minutes Rock. From. Yeah, I know. Slippery Rock University yeah, is in the area. Yeah. Yes. Is there an actual Slippery Rock in Slippery Rock? Or they just call yeah, it? Yeah, there's Slippery Rock Creek. There's some pretty slippery rocks. There are. Okay, so we got it. Yeah. All right, boys. Yeah, okay. have a good time. Nice you. Thank you. Fans are uh, pretty cleared out. I got like nine other post race shows that I do. So uh, it's not quite as jam packed as it was. Here's the best part about this race not the 450 second moto which is one of the best motos i've ever seen in the big bike class ever that's second the best part was having a crowd at the podium which we did not have all year last year i keep referencing back to adam steve cerullo winning his first ever national last year at redbud he's a popular rider he wins his first 450 race first 450 national win for him and it's at redbud and you could hear the pop of the champagne because there was no crowd no noise that's a travesty for this sport. The fans and being able to get close to that podium is one of the unique things about motocross. Even in supercross, it's a great fan experience all around because you can watch the whole track. You've got stadium, amenities and concessions, but you cannot walk right up to the podium except in a motocross race. So we got that back today at High Point. This is a uh, bolt on. He builds our GNCC tracks. Uh, he's overqualified for a lot of the menial tasks yes, they give you here. Absolutely. And you know what? Yeah. I heard the weed show was pretty terrible. And uh, yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm just glad to see it's happening. Are you are you agreeing with the terribleness? You know what? I, I, I've never watched it. Okay. Actually, That's I'm probably your kidding. best you know move. It's probably me, your best move. Do you want me to tell you the truth? I've watched every single one of them all the way through. Okay. Now we know who we can yeah, trust. Yeah. See? Did you do any legit work or was it just grunt tasks? No, no. Actually, the day was uh, very good. Like I was what? Uh, kind of our go-between. Okay. Between? Our uh, MX Sports Pro radio. Oh. And I had our uh, MX Sports local radio. Okay. So I was with Jeff Canfield and those guys, and I was with our guys here on the track. Oh, okay. So the two bikes that broke down, yeah. I said, hey guys, uh, there's a bike broke down in section 26. And you didn't have to do it? And I didn't have to do it. Oh my gosh. 
bolt on finally didn't have to tow anybody unbelievable it's you awesome. finally yeah. upgraded i know if you break down in a gncc he will get you out right. sweep guy and track guy thanks bolt on glad you watch all the shows so um the crowd was back that was awesome now let's get into the racing that uh, second 450 moto that was nutty 450 class keeps delivering now we're very sad to see that zach osborne is out of the series we're very sad to see that jeremy martin is at least out for a while i don't know if he's out of the whole series we're we're sad to be missing guys but the racing is still delivering some unpredictable action i'm just going to show you the track here a little bit um these 450 races have been phenomenal and it's been like five guys really for anderson roxon have been to the top Plessinger was third in points coming in, and then you had the speed of Sexton and Cian Cerullo coming into this one, and that's pretty much the way it was in the first moto. Any one of those five guys could have won it. Cian Cerullo got the win. That's a pretty uh, big breakthrough because he was uh, not holding on for the moto wins after leading. Oh, this is my guy right here. When you see us do an on-camera stand-up at the shows, if it wasn't for his work on the microphone and the thing in my ear, I would be mute would ruin my game so thanks and then my gosh you work even harder than i realized and i already thought you did so uh that was a big win for cian cerullo he still didn't have that endurance down the stretch in moto number two but guess who did guess who was back the five rider pack sexton ferrandis roxon plessiger cian cerullo let's make it six because out of nowhere just when you think it was safe we had an et sighting an extraterrestrial sighting et3 is back Second moto, that was old school Eli Tomac. That was 2017, 18, 19, 450 champion level Eli Tomac. He rolled those guys, and behind him, the battling was unreal. Ferrandis, Roxon, and Cien Cerullo, as I said, had one of the best battles I've ever seen in a 450 class moto. And a couple of factors here, I don't want to rain in anybody's parade, but rain is actually a little bit of a factor in this. We got lucky today with the weather. It wasn't muddy, but it was like perfect temperature. It wasn't super hot and humid. We don't often get nationals at this time of year that's neither muddy nor hot. The racing sometimes is better when that happens because the dudes can just keep battling and battling and battling and endurance becomes less of a factor. And also they prepped the track. It wasn't as deep as a lot of these tracks normally are because they were waiting for it to rain. It did not. We did have ruts. We did have bumps. But the riders could move around a little more just like they could in Colorado and they all like that there also so maybe we're on to something a lot of it is what mother nature gives you you can't script it as far as the track conditions perfectly but maybe we're on to something i'll sign up for the rest of the series providing motos like that all day long but we do have to watch for dylan ferrandis that guy digs deep it's roger the coster there they've, they've got more work to do because we did not see the renaissance from uh, webb and Muscan this weekend like at least we saw in the second moto from Sin cerullo Dylan Ferrandis is dangerous, folks. Get used to it. Uh, the guy is gnarly, the guy is gritty. He figures out a way to make it happen, even if it's not his best day late in the races. He's tough, he's good on any track. Um, I think the only fear now, I think we know, he's done it from California, Colorado in here. He's done it on a 450. There's no problems transitioning up. The only thing you gotta worry about, the dude hangs it out. So everyone's always you know, one big mistake away from the whole series looking different. But if that doesn't happen, if that doesn't bite him, dude, he's gonna be tough to stop for this title. And as great as it has been for Ken Roxon, we've had many a championship where the opening three, four, five rounds, it's looking like a Kenny style series and it drifts away later. So uh, you can't count on Roxon. It would be great if he was up there for all 24 motos, but you cannot count on it. I think Ferrandez is here for good and uh, that's dangerous for everybody else. And then we'll see what this Tomac second Moto win leads to. Ferrandis won with a 2-2. He wasn't as good as seeing Cerullo in Moto 1. He wasn't as good as Tomac in Moto 2, but I'm telling you, Ferrandis is rock solid and he's gonna be a serious threat for this title. This is not just a rookie season. It's not just a couple of good races. This is legit. Uh, that's that class. All year, I've been talking about the rebuild of the 250 division. When you lose guys like Ferrandis from that class and seeing Cerullo and Sexton, it leaves the door open and Jeremy Martin should be taking a bunch of wins in that class, but he's been hurt too much. So this has been a year of first time winners. We got like five of them in Supercross. Let's throw another one in the mix with Jalik Swole. Uh, raise your hand if you saw this coming. Yeah, obviously you didn't raise your hand. I don't need to actually see you on the other side of this camera to know you did not. He got a sixth in a moto last week. That was a career best. That was a nice build. I didn't think he was gonna go from sixth to first. 
But here we are. So Jalik Swole is now a winner with 1-3 scores. Let me say out to the Club MX guys. We're just here to ask one thing. Actually, I'll ask two things. First, how's Phil, Brandon? Uh, Phil's all-time low at the moment. What? But he was better. He said his goal was to be top 15, and he finally was today. That's what I said, too, yeah. No, first moto was, like, step forward. Uh, yeah. Made some more big changes, just swinging with suspension, but it was a step forward, but after the second one, he went three steps backwards, so. At any point, Brandon Haas, have you said, why did I sign myself up for a summer <laughs> of dealing with Phil? Oh, I know Phil. No, You're I, good, okay. Yeah, Phil's still got it. He just, he's kind of going down a little wormhole right now that he needs just a little confidence and build out and hmm. it's just not going that need, way. Needs to be positive? Yeah, well, that will never happen. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you only about Phil, but we got to talk about March Banks, bro. Yeah. This is unreal. Yeah. Fourth in Moto2. Yeah, uh, well, the first Moto, he was up there too, but yeah. uh, lost his front end, so he fell back and ended up 10th, but he was up there and then this second Moto, yeah, really good charge, almost podium, fifth overall. Good points on the day, got some good points on some other guys. But yeah, our goal was to improve on our starts and we did. He kind of got in the top 10 right away. So now that we know we can do that, he can be on the box. We just got to keep plucking away. We had seven first weekend, six second weekend, fifth this weekend. That's not easy to do in that class, yeah, to be yeah, that consistent. It is the renaissance of March Banks. Yeah. And by the way, this track has been horrible for him in the past. It was, so yeah. So even better. And he had that on the chip on his shoulder too. Like it was in the back of his head, but. In like a good way, like using it not scared of it. Uh, no, he was a little bit worried about oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, but he, and he overcome it, which is really cool because race day, he didn't think about it. But yeah, I mean, the rougher the track gets in the second moto is when the fitness is more of a, that's when Garrett's strong. And this first moto, really, the track was not that rough. It was technically advanced, I would say, but yeah. the second moto was good. But I, I thought the track conditions were actually really good. For That's what I keep hearing. They're really good. Yeah, they're they're good not. Racing, good passing kind of working i don't know if we can replicate this every time but the less deep yeah. rutted track seems to be working it is they're ripping it yeah. deep and then they're going back over it and like kind of packing it down because oh. they were both weekends in a row it's friday nights it's ripped really deep and yeah they're sealing it back up kind learn something spongy. yeah it's good i like it all right brandon haas club mx thank you legit here banging on the door for podiums at march banks and dealing with phil so, uh, that 250 class, a nice rebuild. You're seeing new winners, new kids jump into the top, getting confidence. This budding championship battle between Jet Lawrence and Justin Cooper, there's no change in that narrative because uh, they both exchanged one beat each other in one moto. Cooper's first moto was a little weird. He bounced back with his best moto of the year in Moto2. Jet wasn't as good at this race as he was at the first two rounds, but it's okay because I think everybody with Jet is just like, well, the kid just has to, you know, use his head and not throw big points away. And he's become really good actually at uh, doing that, just taking podiums on an average day. The heartbreaker is Hunter Lawrence. Today was Hunter Lawrence's day to get back in the mix. He's good at this track. He won a moto here two years ago. He was very fast in qualifying. He got great starts and he crashed on the first lap of uh, both motos. He could have used the day where he, when, when Jet and Cooper both let the door open a little bit to get some points on them and get back in it, he's gotta be bummed. But uh, the 250 class, it still has that dynamic of we don't know what to expect. Jalik Swole going from a moto sixth, never getting on the podium before to win, why not? Thanks to Race Tech uh, for backing these shows. A weekend off, it was supposed to be Southwick. Southwick's been pushed back two weeks. And uh, speaking of that, um, there's a fence way back there. What's up? Who do we got? Who raced today? Me. You raced today. Yeah. How'd you do? Did not qualify. Did not qualify. Six of the LCQ. Uh, close. I'm gonna give you our Jason McConnell. Yeah. I'm gonna give you credit. You know what everybody always says? Missed it by one. So you told the truth. I did miss it by one. I was the Wait, first. I thought it was four. I was the first one to not race the second moto. Oh, they got somebody in. Yeah, they got some people. Uh, yeah. So you did miss it by one. Yeah. Is he telling the truth? Yes. yes he is. Telling okay. The truth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the amount of dudes who said missed it by one, and I'm like, what a coincidence! It's always by one. By one. That is legit. I promise, yeah. Have you made it before? Have made it before. Okay. So Here it's not. A couple times. Yeah. Ironman, um, Bloods Creek. And, yeah. So it's not the ultimate heartbreak. No. Like you've made it. But it's still heartbreak. Sure. Yeah. So I don't even know how this alternate thing works. Do you? Did you go down to the gate? You go down to the gate. And yeah. If somebody doesn't show up. Or yeah. Whatever happens, yep. then you get to go race. So. So you were down there. Was down there. Yeah. Gear, bike. And there was um, one spot open. One yeah. One guy got in. I was the next guy. Ah. Uh, and then you got that mixed thing of you don't want to like hope somebody gets hurt right. or blows their bike up. Right. 
but you kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bit. yeah exactly. We'll yeah. We'll yeah. That, yeah. Uh, other ones you're doing? You doing more? Red Bud and Unadilla. Okay. Yep. So you'll make it at Red Bud. Definitely. All right, 724. Yep. Who are we throwing a shout out to? Driven MX Training. Okay. Foremost Auto Body and Pro Action Suspension. We'll take it. Cool. And oh. Your and? Your girlfriend, girlfriend and photographer, Jess May, Jess May Photos. Jess May Photos. Okay. Is that an at Jess May Photos? It's at Jess May Photos. Oh, we're blowing up here. All right, better luck next time. Thanks. She's the real winner in this one. <laughs> That's your weed show. Cool. At least somebody was left yeah. here for me to talk to. <laughs> See you guys. Is this your stuff right here? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> You're serious racers. <laughs> Not pizza and beer. Uh, that's it for the weed show. We'll see you at uh, Red Bud in two weeks.